I'm a real estate agent in California, and I'm telling you not to buy a house in California. And you'd think it's because prices are dropping like a rock in a koi pond. This map shows the peak to present decline for California counties according to the latest print from the California Association of Realtors and some of these counties, oh my God. So you have the usual Bay Area losers, Marin County down 24%, San Francisco County down 17%, San Mateo County down 22.5%, up here we have Mendocino County down 24%. Some of these northern counties are hit pretty hard. Siskiyou down 38. Tahama down 29. Plumas down 38. In SoCal we have some, some pretty big losers in Los Angeles County, which is down 19%. Ventura County down 11%, but check this out. Santa Barbara County, pricing is down 40% from its peak in March, 2022. But that's not the reason. If anything, now is a pretty good time to buy in counties like Santa Barbara. I mean, look at this oasis of a home, down $500,000 from its original asking price. Scott Walters, time to scoop that up. Scott Walters, in addition to being a real estate blowhard, is a real estate agent in Santa Barbara. So now you're probably thinking that I think prices are still too high in the Golden State. This map shows the ratio of the median home price in each California county to the median household income in each county. Now keep in mind that nationally, the ratio is 5.3. So what you see here is that the inland counties have a price to income ratio that isn't too much worse than the rest of the country. Mid sixes, oof, 7.4 in Merced County. But then when you get to the coast, oh my goodness, Orange County, 12.4, LA County, 9.3, Ventura County, 8.8, .8. Santa Barbara County, 9.1. Here we go, guys. San Luis Obispo, 11.1, .1. Monterey County, 11, Santa Cruz County, 12.8, San Mateo County, 14.1. San Francisco County, 14. And Marin County, 13.5. Even with the huge fall off in prices the last year, California is still overpriced when you look at household incomes, right? Well, not necessarily. And more importantly, that's not why I think you shouldn't buy a house in California, but we're getting warmer. Why are houses so expensive in California? At its root, it's a supply and demand problem. California has far too little supply of housing for the housing demand made by its 40 million residents. According to the latest US Census data, there are 2.92 California residents for every occupied housing unit, behind only Utah. And to be clear, Utah isn't facing a housing crisis. It's just that Utah is two thirds Mormon and Mormon families have more kids. And that's not shade or prejudice. The Pew Research Center found in 2015 that Mormon parents have an average of 3.4 kids compared to the national average of 2.1. Anyway, California's only behind Utah and Hawaii, which is another tremendously expensive place to buy a home. So if you find yourself scratching your head wondering why houses in California are so much more expensive than comparable houses in Texas or North Carolina or Tennessee, just remember the supply and demand curve you learned in AP Economics. So am I telling you not to buy a house in California because there aren't enough of them to go around? Of course not. That's ridiculous. The reason not to buy a house in California is because of the state's response to its housing shortage. And no, this isn't about taxes in California. In fact, as much as the rest of the country rags on California's state income tax, California's property tax situation is extremely advantageous to California homeowners. California Prop 13 passed in 1978 limits property tax increases to just 2% per year. So while Texans have been going apeshit this year over property tax bills ballooning 20% as home values balloon 20%, California homeowners get to enjoy all of that property appreciation with but a 2% lift on their tax bills. You won't often see a California taxpayer say this, but with regards to my property tax bill, thank you, California, for your incredible generosity. No, the government's reaction I'm talking about here are the laws and ordinances put in place over the last five years to alleviate the housing shortage. I'm not a California housing expert per se, but here's the TLDR. It is notoriously expensive and difficult to be a developer in California, and most of it boils down to NIMBYism. NIMBY being an acronym for not in my backyard. A lot of California homeowners got comfy in their single family homes, in their single family neighborhoods, and between restrictive zoning and CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act, it became very easy to stop housing density in its tracks throughout the state. Finally, some state politicians in Sacramento got wise and decided to attack the problem head on. If single family homeowners were preventing much needed housing density, then California would bring density 
right to the single family homes. In 2016, the California state government started passing laws legalizing ADUs, accessory dwelling units. These were guest houses, granny flats, basement apartments, quasi-legal housing units that already existed on single family parcels. By 2020, ADUs were the new norm in California. Since then, state law has required cities and counties to approve ADU building permits within 60 days of submission as opposed to regular building permits, which can take six or 10 months to get approved. A myriad of restrictions imposed by cities and counties, from an owner occupancy requirement to parking requirements to height restrictions have been banned by state law. A single family parcel can now have two additional housing units, an ADU and a JADU, or a junior accessory dwelling unit. But it gets crazier, as if you didn't already think statewide housing law could get this crazy. In 2021, California passed SB9, which went into effect on January 1st, 2022. SB9 has two hugely impactful provisions. Firstly, SB9 allows anybody to build two housing units on one single family parcel. You can build a duplex or two separate houses, and there are some standard building codes involved, but now every single family parcel in California is allowed two homes. And secondly, SB9 allows for any single family parcel to be split into two. There is a three-year occupancy requirement in place for now, but if you have a 10,000 square foot lot with a 5,000 square foot backyard, well, now you can cut off the backyard and have a brand new 5,000 square foot single family parcel ready to sell or for a new house. And these are development opportunities, very profitable opportunities, only available to California home buyers and home owners. Now you're probably already thinking, this is all well and good, but how does one go about getting the money to do all this building? And I'll show you exactly how later in the video. But first, I have to tell you that these two provisions of SB9 are not exclusive. In other words, you can do both. So now, today, in California, with one single family lot, you can build four different homes. And remember those ADU laws we were talking about? Those still apply. So you can also add an ADU and JADU to each new lot, doubling the number of homes allowed on a single family parcel from four to eight. That's a lot of housing. Let's scale it back and talk about some realistic options, then cover how to pay for it all. Easiest way to take advantage of California's incredible homeownership laws is to buy a house on a large lot, subdivide off some of the lot through SB9 as little as 40%, and sell the land to a developer. Houses in California don't actually cost more than houses elsewhere. It's the land underneath them that's so valuable. And by buying a house, then selling off the backyard as a new parcel, you can immediately pay off perhaps a third of your mortgage. Another smart play, buy a house with a garage and convert the garage into a studio apartment using ADU laws. A lot of first time home buyers in California are young families and having an extra unit for the grandparents to stay in can be a lifesaver. When the tykes are a little older, turn the studio apartment into a rental to cover the mortgage so you can start saving for kiddos college fund. Or instead of converting the garage to a studio apartment, build it up to a two bedroom ADU. Now you have a more spacious granny flat for the in-laws while kiddos a baby. And in a couple of years, use SB9 to divide the lot between the house and the ADU. You can then sell the ADU and the new parcel it sits on. And if it's been five, six, seven years since your initial purchase, the sale might be big enough to pay off your whole mortgage. Now kiddo's going to Harvard. At least you'll be able to foot the bill if she gets in. Here's a real world example from one of my clients. Martin and Elle bought a 2200 square foot fixer in the hilly neighborhood of El Sereno in Los Angeles. Using a renovation loan, which we'll touch on again in a moment, and taking advantage of SB9, they converted the two-story house into a two-unit duplex, one unit upstairs and one unit downstairs. Their plan is to Airbnb the downstairs unit to cover the cost of the mortgage, but that's not the whole plan. There's a whole bottom half to their hillside lot, and Martin and Elle have an SB9 application submitted right now to divide the lot into two and build another duplex on the bottom half. Eventually, Martin and Elle will be facing some pretty amazing options. They can get paid to live in their home by collecting rental income from the other three units. They can sell off the lower duplex once it's completed and probably live mortgage-free in the upper duplex with or without tenants. Or they can move on to their next home and keep this hugely valuable asset as the bedrock of their investment portfolio. Now, I mentioned that Martin and L used a renovation loan. And this is one of the strategies you can employ to fund these projects. Whereas a traditional loan is based on the value of the home, a renovation loan is based on the value of the finished product, whatever it is, after the renovation is complete. You can use a renovation loan not just to make a house look better, but to build an ADU, 
a JADU, even a whole nother house. So if you find a dumpy $400,000 house on a large corner lot and you work with a qualified lender and contractor to put together a plan for a mini compound worth $800,000, you can take out a renovation loan based on that $800,000 value. In many circumstances, you'd be able to borrow up to 95% of that $800,000 finished product value. Keep in mind, of course, that you do have to qualify to pay for this mortgage. So while you definitely don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank for construction, you do need a solid income, jointly with your partner if you're buying together, to make this work. The other amazing strategy to pay for all of this is called a construction HELOC. HELOC stands for Home Equity Line of Credit, and a HELOC is just that, a line of credit like you have with a credit card based on the equity that you have in your home. What's amazing about a construction HELOC is that you can borrow up to 125% of the value of the post-construction finished product. Why is this a big deal? Now, ordinarily, it's a bad idea to ever borrow more than a piece of property is or will be worth. You don't wanna voluntarily put yourself underwater on a property by having a mortgage that exceeds its value. So why is it a good thing, nay, a great thing, that you can borrow up to 125% of the value of a home construction project? Simple. Two houses on one lot, that's valuable. But two houses on two lots, even taking into account that the lots are smaller, that's much more valuable. And four houses on two lots? Let's not even get started. Look, long story short, working with an experienced realtor and lender and correctly sequencing your loans and permits, buying a home in California is an entirely different prospect than buying a home in any other state in the country. That's why I say, don't buy a home in California. Don't just buy a home in California. You're selling your future self short if you do. To solve its housing crisis, California California has empowered regular home buyers with extraordinary opportunities and taking advantage of even some of them can have a profound impact on the rest of your life. So look, if you're still watching this video, if the gears have started turning in that motivated skull of yours, get in touch. I help home buyers all over the state like Martin and Elm, Los Angeles, conceive of and execute home buying strategies that through SB9 and ADU laws, create life-changing wealth. Complete a quick survey at www.househack.la backslash survey to see if you qualify for a free, no obligation strategy session. We'll review your current situation, your financial goals, and how to use California real estate to get you from here to there.